As a podcaster, you want as many people to listen to your podcast as possible. That's no secret. And growth can be slow. It can feel slow for the first year or even two years. But ideally, you're going to want to see some growth after you've been podcasting for a while. It's nuanced and can be difficult to track down the reason why your podcast is struggling. But I've put together 11 of the most common reasons for you to think about that might be the cause of why your podcast isn't growing as fast as you'd like. Number one, maybe you didn't clearly define your show's purpose. And that's not just what is in it for you, although that's obviously important, that you're podcasting for a specific goal, uh, a specific reason to drive you forward. But you need to also be really clear on what your podcast is doing for your ideal listener. What problems do they have that need solving? How will each individual episode help them solve part of that overall problem? What are the individual aspects uh, of of their situation? Um, What are their attitudes towards the particular topic you're podcasting about? Answers to these questions is going to help you to tailor your podcast, help you make decisions on every episode going forward. You want to be constantly thinking, is this right for my ideal listener? Is this going to help them towards their goals? Number two, perhaps you didn't create an actionable strategy. Now, this can be translated into a content calendar, which you're going to follow each week. So your content strategy is going to be looking at things from a broad perspective, like just what kind of content are you going to be making? What's the format of your podcast? There are going to be some specific elements like what day and what frequency are your podcast episodes going to be posted, a schedule that you can stick to confidently and consistently. And where will you promote this content? So there's no point in promoting on every single social media channel if that isn't where your ideal listener, as we mentioned in the first point, hangs out. Think about where your ideal listener hangs out and focus on that platform alone. Maybe then you can branch out to others. So we're talking about actionable strategy. So there's no point in putting together a a content marketing strategy that has you posting every single day to every single platform. posting an episode a week, even if you don't have time for that and so on. It has to be a strategy that's actionable in the long term, is going to keep you consistent and keep you from burning out. One other reason your podcast might not be growing is the branding isn't consistent. A strong brand can help your podcast to stand out within your niche and help people to find you and help people to remember you. A lot of people, they're not going to be seeing one piece of content and then clicking through and listening to your full podcast episode and subscribing and so on. A lot of people are going to take a lot longer. They're going to see a clip posted by you every week or so. They're going to see your cover art and your logo cropping up online in the podcast directories. And if your branding is consistent, and I'm talking about the colours, the the fonts that you use, the tone of voice when you talk about your podcast, Uh, the music and the musical themes in your intro and outro, if they stay consistent, it's going to help cement that brand in a potential listener's mind and eventually push them to click and then remember your show going forward. Number four is maybe not everyone can find you. So we already talked about social media, making sure that you're posting on the social media where your ideal listener is hanging out, but also is your podcast showing on all the platforms? I mean, I've spoken to podcasters who have been podcasting for months, even years, and I've had a look to give them some advice and I've had a look at their podcast and I search on Spotify, I find it, I search on iTunes and it's not there. They've been podcasting for all this time and their podcast isn't even on one of the major platforms. And it's not just the major platforms. We're also talking about YouTube and some of the smaller platforms as well. If you find yourself a good podcast host, they should distribute your audio to all the major platforms. But it does take a little bit of work up front, like signing up to Apple Podcast Connect to make sure that it's going to be distributed everywhere. Take a look at your podcast host. Search manually on each of these platforms that your listeners listen on. So Spotify, Apple, Deezer, Amazon, Samsung, all these places, make sure that your podcast is showing up on there. And if not, check your host or sign up to the platforms that require manual sign up. Number five is your episodes could be too long. And I'm not going to tell you exactly how long your podcast episodes should be. It depends on your format. It depends on how often you're delivering episodes. And it could also be that they're too short as well. But either way, it's something to consider. So if you're putting out hour-long interview episodes for busy CEOs every week and you have a look at your iTunes stats and you realise that people are actually dropping off. A lot of people are dropping off after the first few minutes or the first sort of 25% or so. Maybe 
it's to do with the length of your episodes. Maybe there's a way you can shorten them with smart, tight editing that's not going to remove any value. It's going to maybe you can cut the five minutes of banter up front and keep your episodes nice and concise while still delivering the same value. But the best way of finding out is by just having conversations, speaking with your fans. Are they Maybe they're listening to 100% of the episode most of the time and they're wanting more. Maybe it's your 10 minute episodes aren't long enough for them and you could be capturing your audience and keeping them engaged for a lot longer if you put more content out there. So just have a think and have a look at your analytics, have conversations with people and have a think if there's anything you can do with the length of your episodes that's going to help keep people engaged. Number six, maybe you aren't producing enough content. So this is also linked to the content strategy we were talking about earlier. But if you're only producing one episode a month, even if you're consistent with it, your podcast isn't going to grow very fast. If you're releasing one, po- one episode every two weeks, that's fine. But if you release it every one week, and your audience uh, is wanting more, then that's going to help it grow. There's twice as many episodes out there for people to listen. That doesn't mean your listener base is going to double, um, but it does mean more engagement for your listener, keeping them at top of mind, and more op- opportunities for creating shorts and other content for social media to get your message out there. So if you only have time for one episode a month, then that's all you have time for. But maybe think about if there's a way that you can shorten things or cut the video side of things maybe for a while and focus on doing an episode every two weeks or an episode every week and see if the engagement grows from doing that. Number seven, is your content focused enough? So again, ideal listener, thinking about what they want, what the problem is they want solving. What is it that you promised them in the title of your episode? Are you actually focused on that in the episode or are you going off on tangents with your co-host? Are you chatting about, you know, is there 10 minutes of bro talk up front before you actually start talking about what your audience wants? And if you're interviewing someone and they start to drift off topic or they go too into detail about something that isn't relevant for your audience, I know it's hard, but it's up to you as an interviewer to hone those skills, to try and steer them in the right direction of where the conversation needs to go. Number eight, does your audio sound good enough? Now, this one is close to my heart. One common mistake that podcasters make is to overlook their audio quality. Studies have shown that high quality audio gives your listener a perception that the the content is higher quality and that the speaker is more intelligent. There are too many podcasts out there to settle for average audio. They might as well listen to one that sounds better. Hiring a professional producer is the best way to get the the most out of each episode, but simply getting the right microphone and setting it up correctly can make a massive difference to your audio quality. Getting a high quality dynamic microphone like an ATR 2100X or a Shure MV7 is going to help get you that studio quality vocal regardless of where you're recording. And it doesn't have to cost you the earth to get a setup that gives you great results. I've got a little ebook you can download for free actually that goes over how to get the most out of your audio. I'll leave a link in the description below or you can go directly to claricast.com forward slash kickstart. Number nine, the title of your podcast and your episodes might not be enough to get people to take that next step and subscribe or listen to your episodes. So your title, it needs to be clear, it needs to be unique and memorable. So the title of the show that is, it has to be obvious to the listener what your show is about. There's no point in calling your show something that your listener doesn't understand. For example, if you have a podcast hosted by Jay and Kaylee and you call it the Jaylee Show, and it's actually about how to grow a successful online business, then People who don't know who, who you are, they're not going to be intrigued. They're not going to click. It has to be obvious what the podcast is about from the title because most people won't even read past the title or the cover art. And then when it comes to your episode titles, they also need to be very clear of what problem that episode is solving for the listener. So it has to be something super specific uh, and intriguing and ideally not give away the answers in the title. Number 10, are you offering anything outside of the podcast? So you've got your call to action in your episode, I hope you're asking people to subscribe on each episode, but when your podcast gets to a certain size, maybe your listeners are going to want more. They're going to want to sign up to your email list and get updates on when your episodes are coming out, or they want some more tailored advice, or they want your advice in a different format, like something they can read in between episodes. Think about how you can add to your community by creating a Facebook group 
or an email list or something like that, just something outside uh, of your podcast itself that's going to help them to engage with other listeners, create awareness, create conversation, and overall help your podcast to grow and bring people into your ecosystem. And that leads us on to number 11. Are you cultivating relationships with your listeners? So have you ever spoken to any of your listeners? Have you made a genuine connection? Have you asked them their opinion on the show? Uh, have you tried to offer any expertise in your particular niche to your listeners? There are lots of ways to create these valuable relationships like replying on social media and offering to guest on other shows, which can put you in front of someone else's audience. If you don't have an existing audience, it can be difficult to grow, but if you form relationships with other people in your niche, then more people will start to know, like, and trust you. And there we have it. I hope you've found some of these helpful. Maybe you've picked out two or three that you feel like you could focus on to help grow your audience. Let me know in the comments section below which one are you gonna be focusing on next? What's the next step for your podcasting journey? And hit subscribe for more podcast tips and tutorials. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.